in the Vajrayana uh, tradition, so when we take refuge, sometimes it's called the six objects of refuge, right? Like uh, the outer object of refuge is the common of refuge that we take in, uh, which is Buddha, uh, Dharma, and uh, Sangha. Uh, addition to these three uh, jewels, we have another uh, uh, set of three, <coughs> which we call as the inner um, object of refuge, which is uh, the uh, Lama, right, who, who is the root of the blessings, and then we have the meditational uh, deity, which is uh, <clears throat> can be peaceful, can be a wrathful uh, manifestations of Buddha, and as a, the root of accomplishment, then we ha take refuge in, in the uh, darkness, the uh, female uh, manifestations of Buddha. The, the word itself looks like it uh, means the uh, as translated in Tibetan, Kha means space, and Do means to go. So it's sort of someone who is uh, going in this space with no destination. Or you can go, uh, keep on going forever and there's no uh, nowhere to land, land up, right? So Takini is a woman with crazy wisdom. So crazy wisdom has no, if it, is cra uh, uh, if it is not crazy, there will be some kind of <coughs> a formula, a regulation, but the crazy wisdom doesn't have any kind of a fixed law. In the ultimate sense, <coughs> uh, Dakini is emptiness. So we were using that word, can be used as sky, and goer, right? So that emptiness the sky or the space is the ultimate truth. It itself is, be, uh, is totally empty. There's no characteristic in it. So it's like space. It's being very spacious and that doesn't change at all. It is beyond a conditional phenomena. So that is the emptiness. And that is the ultimate truth of all phenomena. And that the goal as, uh, aspect, right, uh, symbolizes that the, it is empty but yet very dynamic and uh, has that kind of an activity which can manifest into various forms. So I would say that the ultimate uh, dark, darkening is emptiness. It is the Buddha Samanta Bhadri uh, Kundu Sangmo, the primordial Buddha. Uh, uh, and uh, when uh, to symbolize that this ultimate nature is free of all our our conceptualizations, so uh, is uh, like is uh, uh, depicted in the form of uh, like uh, naked to uh, to symbolize that naked uh, awareness, which is free of all these conceptual elaborations. <clears throat> so that is the ultimate dakini to which we take refuge. Uh, the, uh, everything that we experience is empty in this very right moment. It is the ultimate truth. So that case, then uh, whatever you see, whatever you hear or contemplate or think becomes the aspect of dakini. And that becomes the ultimate refuge, because uh, our ultimate refuge is emptiness. Now, Vajravarahi uh, is again uh, the manifestation of the uh, the emptiness in the form of uh, uh, that uh, a woman, uh, female Buddha. Mainly, uh, the uh, Dorje Pamo is depicted in red. So that of sort of the red is a, a color of uh, magnetizing to bring these uh, people in uh, the Dharma uh, through that uh, depiction of the color which is used in red. And again, uh, she has that uh, curved blade to cut through our uh, conceptual uh, 
construct, the emptiness, and then uh, to symbolize offering of the desire and the, uh, our life force of samsara is uh, she is holding that kapala uh, which is filled with blood. To, uh, to sustain our body, what we need is blood. To, to sustain our samsaric energy is our desire, our attachment. So, uh, uh, when you want to kill someone, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, maybe put to rest is a nice way of saying. And you know, in, uh, in Vajrayana, is a very nice way of saying, like this, saying that is liberation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding, that's, <laughs> that's the word. <laughs> so, if you want to liberate someone, <laughs> You have to just take uh, drain that blood out, right? So likewise, if you want to liberate uh, yourself from this cyclic existence, so what you have to do is just drain out all this attachment, and you are free. So to symbolize that, like uh, the sustaining force of samsara is our attachment, our desire. So uh, she is making that uh, offering to. Uh, the Buddhas or in sense of emptiness so that we can uh, detach ourselves from samsara by draining out its, its, its uh, life force. And then in doing that again uh, uh, in <coughs> uh, uh, her head there's a pick is usually a symbol of ignorance. So, after, after having the victory over the war with ignorance, what she did was, oh, she thought that it's good to put that head on, on her. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just to symbolize that she has overcome um, the, uh, the uh, ignorance. Um, and then uh, she is again uh, depicted in all these uh, different attires, like especially the bones, uh, the different uh, ornaments of the bone. is just to symbolize that uh, uh, she has transformed that even that mundane, uh, mundane aspect of the body into uh, the wisdom body. Then uh, Mother uh, Tara was one who got enlightened in a female form and then through that uh, uh, attainment she was swiftly able to help many sentient beings. So <clears throat> to call her for her enlightened activity is sort of now just pressing 911, right? <laughs> so if you're in a problem, so you just press 911 to Mother Tara and for sure that she'll come and help you. <laughs> when we are talking about the three roots, right? Tinleg is our kando. So the root of enlightened activity is the uh, darkness. Everything is possible just because it's empty. <clears throat> because if it is not empty, what will happen is there will be some kind of a uh, rigid rigidity in that fundamental building block and you cannot change that. So you'll have only one color, you'll have just or no color and you cannot change at all. So as we do not have that rigid formation, it's totally empty and then if we are able to abide ourselves in that empty nature which is the practice of Takini, which is the ultimate practice and which can give us all this uh, being, um, give, we are birth to all this realization, so that's why uh, the practice of Dakini in a female uh, form of a, of a meditational deity is taught in the, uh, I would say, the Vajrayana uh, teaching. <laughs>